You know, as you're talking now, in my childhood, even to my adulthood, Indians have always been seen as conservative. <laughs> You've never struck me as like the stereotypical. Do you fit within your community? Yeah, that's such a beautiful question. Because stereotypes box us, yeah. right? And so I think the way we were raised, we were not a stereotypical mm. Indian family. Firstly, my mother was the head of the household. My gran was in charge. Um, we, I, I had my first toy that I had, it's not a toy, a very beautiful car. Yeah. Oh, I love cars. So, so it, it probably stems from then. Um, my dad, he probably gave me that as a gift before he died. Mm. Um, it was a red racing car. You know, it's one that you could sit in and you could yeah, pedal. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I didn't have so a, that was I didn't have a tea, yeah. I didn't have a tea set. Yeah. And a doll. And a doll. I don't think I, I can't remember a doll. Yeah. And it probably links back to where I am right now because people often laugh, people who know me well, who come to my house and say, Why does your pot drawer have no pots? And I said, Why do you need the pots if you if you're not cooking? <laughs> You know, so that's not a woman that doesn't cook. Oh my god! But gosh. I must say, my husband makes the best lamb curry. <laughs> so we have a kitchen because it came with a house. Yes. But my husband is so. So in many ways, the stereotype of where your place is as a woman, as an Indian woman, was never my frame of reference yes. from the time I was little. Yeah. And like I started off saying to you, we were told and brought up, raised to, with the notion that you could do yeah. anything. And I start off telling you the story of us playing cricket. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, with makeshift cricket bats. <laughs> so, so not stereotypical at all. And, and, and probably, Dudu, that is a problem mm. for people who box people. Mm. Which is why I suppose you are able to be such a wisdom voice in the space of diversity, because you live that, you understand, you know, it's most things, it's not about color, it's not about gender, it's these other things that we also ignore. In South Africa, you know, in KwaZulu Natal, my home province, where I'm originally our from, province. our home province, the Indian and African community have had conflicts over the years. Um, you know, I don't want you to be the spokesperson for Indians. But where does that stem from? Why do we have this intolerance between these two races? So I'm glad you said that, that I'm not the spokesperson because I think you, this is better probably handle the answer by somebody who has expertise in the history of this. But I want to start off by saying it's interesting how we've made this about Indians and blacks in, mm. in, in, in Natal. In Natal. Mm. Surely the bigger question should be we both, mm. both race groups, were victims of a system. and Which put that, us in a hierarchy. Which put us in a hierarchy, true, mm. not of our doing. Because mm. remember, it was a, a systemic way in which we were kind of built in, into that hierarchy, as you call it. So that we don't unite. And, and part of that, in fact, when I was looking at Mum Winnie's documentary when she passed away and I was thinking because I'm going to liken that to the question you're asking me how a system a machinery can cause far more damage than the reality of what it is yes and and your question then takes me to that point from what I remember um, and I did study history at university because I think history matters. Beautiful yes. book called mm. Why History Matters. Mm. Is that the 1949 riots was a part of that machinery, of that systemic way of pitting one against the other. And you took your eye off the real thing yes. that was actually at the core of our problem. Which is happening now even. Isn't that so? We're How? calling it xenophobic. It's not. It's a an economic war. Absolutely. And we keep on adopting uh, labels that are not of our making. So when you say the intolerance for each other, I don't think it's intolerance. I think it has been maybe uh, both sides, victims of a system, um, a system that was by design. And I'm saying this very, very emphatically, because like you say, that by design approach, we've seen it play out now. 
I think I don't want to get locked in that pass, but yeah. I, I want to offer what I a think could up. be a way still, out. Yeah. Of course, because it's, it's more important that we talk about solutions. So that we're not man manipulated by politicians. Absolutely. This is what we're getting Absolutely. into now. Yeah. And I think it, is, it comes back to this basic thing of humanity. When we start to talk and understand each other and how we got into this room, the beautiful way in which you started this interview, because you will not know me, really know me, if you don't know how I got mm. to be here. I may be sitting in this affluent suburb today, but that's not the story of who I am. The story of who I am is how I got into yeah. this room. And so what we need to start to build on, and I want to extend it to where we are in 2019, is that let's move beyond the superficial. Let's get back to basics of understanding, why don't you like me? Mm. What is it that... What is it about me that jars you when I walk into this room? And Lord knows you and I both have had tons of experience of mm. that. The way we look, the way we are fiery, the way we stand up against that which is wrong. And people, that makes people uncomfortable. So there's a level of discomfort between the two race groups, but we haven't addressed the root yeah. of the problem. And what has happened in the process is that we've built on this over a period of time through judgment. And when you judge, you, you stop learning. Mm. It's time to suspend judgment and to understand what makes you, why do you feel this way when, when you're in my presence? Why do you think this is an Indian versus a black, whether it is, you know, when I look at, I mean, we talk so much about black, white, Indian. If you were of colored, what we call the colored race mm. in this country. Mixed race, yeah. The mixed race, you know, I'm using the, the terminology of what people commonly refer to people of mixed race. Where do they fit in? Mm. What's their voice? My question is, when do you stop being coloured? Because in my background, there's mix, so when do you stop being coloured? But that's another... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's we another, can do that yeah. another time. <laughs> but of course. Yeah. But, but, isn't, uh, but before we move off it, isn't it bigger than now? If we're going to... What got us into the room was good enough. But how are we going to get to the next, next yeah. means we've got to stop having these superficial discussions and I don't say superficial lightly, mm. because on the basis of race, we right. lock in things. On the basis of gender, on right. the basis of religion, Much culture, ethnicity, yeah. and so on. And the, the, the complexity of this is that there's an intersectionality of all of these th layers, and they're happening at the same time. So that is why we're not solving for some of the, what I would consider some of the intractable problems that we are faced with mm. because we're not addressing them in a holistic way. Yeah.